Welcome, sleepers. We all coexist in a world so beautiful it can transform our frowns to smiles and bring us the tranquility and rest we so desire. All you need to do is close your eyes and let this beauty have a chance. Hi, my name is Jason Kenzie and tonight I'm going to tell you a story about a phenomenal creature. It is told by many that this astonishing beast roams the enchanted forests of North America. Indeed, this cryptid is so reclusive and mysterious, some researchers believe they possessed magical powers. So please, lay back, close your eyes, alchemate your CPAP machine, take a deep breath, and join me on a trip through the eyes of a Bigfoot. If you will, let's set the scene of our sleep story. Get comfortable and notice the rhythmic rise and fall of your breath. Now, gently allow your mind to float into the thick green forests, made beautiful and serene by the scents of flora and sounds of fauna. Let's open our listening minds to hear the gentle movement and play of a young stream alongside our canopy trail. Looking through your mind's eye, observe yourself walking in this friendly forest. On a soothing mission of discovery, remember to check your breath as it rises and falls allowing your steps and breathing to connect and move together. You are an explorer and woodsman. Your mission is to seek an exceptional place for your family to build a home of harmony and comfort. Now, let us listen to the inner voice of our noble sojourner. Listen and imagine what the sound of flowing water, cool and cascading over moss and leaves, nature's jewels covered in turquoise and verdant green. Watch as this gentle ribbon of life courses around old growth and rests between boulders. Hearken to the songbirds that are nesting high in the cedar trees. A bluebird nourishes her chicks with a freshly caught beetle and, a, and the crisp air glides effortlessly through the shafts of illumination from the morning sun. This is where our journey leads us. This is that new home we now seek. And 
now we will join the first person perspective as we continue deeper into our sleep story. The morning sun begins its climb far in the eastern mountains. It dances towards our western enclosure with warm golden threads teasing the forest into wakefulness. I turn one last time to farewell to my partner and children. My eyes take in all the details of my loved ones. I make an imprint in my mind, the three of them standing beneath a canopy of woven branches. For seven years, it has provided my family shelter from rain, snow, or sleet, or whatever might fall on us from the heavens above. It has been our place of refuge and joy. I descend from my sanctuary in the forest. I am on a mission of discovery. I must find my family a new shelter home. It must be hidden and near water with great beauty. It must hide us from detection from the furless humans. I grunt in annoyance. Recalling the many encounters with humans, certainly they are as curious as they are annoying. Yes, they look funny, are mostly jolly, and rarely stop speaking. In the area where we are living, I grew tired. Too many humans interrupt my sleep. They are always screaming and whooping. I met with our clan leaders. They told me of an untouched land just past the Painted Mountains. It is said these forests are full of waterfalls and caves. There are fish and elk. My little ones can my explore a way. Can explore away my little ones from the prying eyes. Can explore away of humans from the prying eyes of humans. Suddenly, my throat feels tight, and my eyes become watery. I seldom travel without my family. I like staying close by, in case she or my children need me. We are all at our best when we are together. Just as I stepped over a fallen tree, knocked down from a strong summer windstorm, there is a familiar aroma in the air. I quickly gain control of my emotion. I duck down and lean into the bush. I become as still as a blade of grass. Just a few meters in front of me walks a lizard on two legs. I know him too well, Mr. Sour Gills. I do not wish to communicate with him at this moment. These scaly creatures have short tempers and are long-winded and are long-winded. You could say 
they like to talk your ear off. This is ironic because they don't have ears themselves. The thought makes me silently belly laugh, almost blowing my cover. Oh great, now a cute butterfly lands on my nose. Its golden yellow wings tickle. I do my best to keep calm until the lizard man is out of sight and out of scent. I let out a sigh of relief whew, and continue on moving. Soon I am into the new forest district. With every seven foot stride I take, I forge on snappily over the rugged ground, leaving behind my 24 inch tracks. As I navigate this uncharted timber, I grab branches, twisting and breaking them so my family can see which direction I am headed. My long, dark, brown hair is tangled and woven together with silt from the river, leaves from the trees, and sticks from many nights of foraging food. I am dragged away from my thoughts by a faint sound of distress. It wafts on the breeze and is carried by the leaves and the trees out of the boundless hectares of woodlands I am called to haste and help. I set to a steady jog and as I traverse through the undergrowth and the rainforest, the cry intensifies. Now I know a wildcat has been injured. I slow to a walk, then move towards an old branch cedar. Looking up, I see a young cougar he turns to face me, and I see his face is filled with porcupine quills. <laughs> Typical. I move silently up the tree, and with a single touch to his shoulder, he is suddenly immobilized. The cat is nervous and uncertain as I throw him over my shoulder and dismount the tree. This time I kneel over the feline, placing my hand on his shoulders to assess with the damage. Immediately the cat, recognizing I was there to help, went limp. There were twelve spikes in his face. With care, I removed each spike. Once I was done, and as soon as I let go of him, he bounded down the trail and out of sight. I could hear a little meow he let out as a thank you to me. But hark, I hear something near. As I move carefully, 
through the slender underbrush and over water smoothed boulders, I notice a couple of humans wearing cowboy hats on horseback, watching me as I journey through this dry riverbed. I watch as White Hat Man slowly but gently slides off his steer. I watch as White Hat Man slowly but surely slides off his steed. He is crouching into a viewing area and I am the subject. I can see he is holding a camera. Next to him is his black and white speckled steed standing there gracefully as his mane bellows in the breeze. I am too focused on my mission to deal with these cowboys. Without a second thought, I look back briefly to confirm the Elder's Trail sign. A broken tree with a smiley face. This is a good sign. I'm on the right track. I move out of the dry riverbed and walk into the welcoming timber. I'm almost there. Quietly, I step into the thick green forest. I am activated in every sense of my body. The hundreds of different smells delight my heart. Birds on the wing and fish in the river. It is made more beautiful and mystical by the vision of my family of ancient redwoods dipping their wandering roots into the vibrant river. As I expand my listening further, I am thrilled to hear the tumble and ruckus of a waterfall. I smile. I have found it. This is my family's new home. My heart is grateful. I rest and listen, breathing my breath with the wind and the water. My breath follows the sound of flowing water, cool and cascading. I watch with pleasure as this welcoming water dances with fading daylight, while the wise old trees watch and wonder. The bright feathered songbirds that are nesting high in the cedar trees sing a song of this place. A saucy chipmunk scurries to hide a mouthful of nuts. This is where my quest has brought me. This will be our new home. I suddenly feel the heat and weariness for my long trek. The thick hair that covers my entire body can be warm in the summer heat. Not to mention fragrant. I'm thirsty and feel dusty and dry. I make my way to inviting spring. The cool, refreshing water feels so nice on my skin. I drink deeply, restoring my strength. I 
get lost in the pure pleasure of my refreshing bath. Soon I notice a couple of sleek and roly-poly grizzly cubs frolicking on the far side of my liquid shelter. They are deeply distracted as they compete to catch a rainbow trout. Soon these two cuties are back to playing rough sliding from the overhanging muddy banks into the clear blue flowing water. Mother Bear will be close by, keeping her keen nose and attention on her prized youngsters. Like most mothers, she will sleep or graze nearby ever at a ready to protect her young. I keep one eye open just in case she mistakes me for a threat. Bears are equally as protective of their young as the Sasquatch people. As the day turns into its golden embrace, I feel the discomfort of separation and longing for my family. I have many miles to go before I'm back with my family. a human walking through the forest. He has a backpack on his back and a long stick in his hand. Time to have some fun. I step out onto the trail and quietly wait. I observe he's an older man with a beard that is much bigger than mine. He is a slow walker. Ah, he is watching the ground to make sure he doesn't trip on any of the rocks or thick tree roots. As he approaches, I notice he doesn't see me. It is a bit surprising when he comes to a complete stop only a foot away from my big toe. His head slowly moves from my large feet up my nine foot tall body to my cone shaped head and his eyes grow wide. I admit I feel very pleased to have surprised, if not shocked him. We locked eyes, and I offer a friendly grin while showing my beautiful large teeth. The effort is difficult as I feel annoyed at yet another wandering human in my forest. Instinctively, my toothy smile is quickly paired with a deep growl. This little man didn't say a word and slowly turned around. He appeared to be moving trance-like and was slowly and steadily going back the way he came. I felt that it was time to teach this little person a lesson. So matching his painfully slow pace, I began to follow him to the forest edge. 
I keep myself exactly behind him while walking in my stealth mode. Yet, I couldn't help myself the entire time, which was very slow and tedious. I practiced my deep breathing. Then I would bellow my fragrant breath at the back of his neck. I knew in my heart I wasn't going to harm him. As soon as he reached his car, he drove out speeding, going zero to sixty in seconds. I looked down and noticed by my feet laid his backpack. Hmm, now I have to dispose of this garbage. Sound. 
as I stroll through the magical moonlight. Abruptly, a canis lupus steps out onto the path, and suddenly my stroll is over. It is as though we are struck with the wonder of the other. She is slim, a youthful wolf, trying to find her way in life. I was not in the mood to dance, so I let her go off through the backwards. I was caught off guard when she stood up on two legs and with one strong push off, she cleared the stream and disappeared around a giant oak tree. These forests are mine. I don't like others trying to take over my territory. I've become hungry. In the darkness, I crouch down, blending into my surroundings. My keen instincts anticipate an unexpected deer to come bounding my way. I must be careful when I hunt for food and subdue my dinner so as not to get injured. As I hunker down in the green thicket, I recall my first human encounter. It was a bright full moon. The owls delighted my senses with their soft-spoken declamations. I could see through the trees as if it was daylight. Moving swiftly, my hearing was bothered by an odd humming. Soon, I spied a radiant shaft of red lights exuding from a number of trees. It was then I began to understand these humans. They try incessantly to capture an image of my people with their small boxes tied to our ancient trees. Day by day and night after night, I see more and more of these red robotic eyes left to spy on us in our forests our home, for now all I do is nonchalantly move around them, just out of sight. At times, I like to blend in so completely with my surroundings when I'm stationary. Some say I can turn unnoticeable a trait that might be true. I've heard their excitement and chatter around their fires. They say Sasquatches must be real. I have seen the beast's glowing red eyes. Still, I vanish into the shadows when I am close to them. My years of observation of these humans has caused me to understand their sense of superiority. According to them, I'm a beast mongrel crossed with their kind. I'm trying to live away from them. I feel misunderstood. I'm no longer hungry. 
but feel a deep weariness drape over me. I start moving, looking for a nice place to lay my head down. It is not long before I find a small cave, large enough for me to slide my legs inside. I gathered fallen trees and uprooted a single one, as my father taught me when I was young. I constructed a massive X-shaped shelter. Tonight, I will sleep beneath this sign. I place a tree on top of the a tree on top of the looks like a compass arrow. It looks like a compass arrow. Direction. Pointing of our new direction home. Of our new safe home. Other clans. Other clans. Understand this mark. They will understand this mark. Of my ten expansion of my territory, my new claim land, my will new claim land, land where I'll will explore. be placed where I'll explore and raise hunt youngsters and raise my youngsters. I long to grow into I long to grow into and to an live elder. out the many and to live out my life the many days of my life. As I am lulled to sleep by the forest's movements and rhythms, I sense my family is nearby. I can detect the familiar scent. Tonight, I will meet up with them and we will travel together over the painted mountain. Dear sleepers, the time has come for you to carry on with your dreaming and we will part ways. Perhaps there will be another day and night of adventure with our new friend down the road. Now we will say to you good night. Thank you for listening to my Bigfoot sleep story. Hopefully, you will find yourself in dreamland before my story ends. Thank mm-hmm. you.